make a joyful noise. We've come to sing a song of praise. We've come, Lord, to give you thanks. Lord, we confess that you are God. You made us, formed us from the dust. As your people, Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we come into your presence singing, for you are good, and your love endures forever. Lord, we come to your house with thanksgiving, for you are faithful to all generations. A joyful noise. With gladness, Lord, we want to serve. Proclaim your name to all the earth. For all you've done, we give you thanks. Lord, we confess that you are God. You made us, formed us from the dust. It's your people, Lord. Bless your name. Lord, we come into your presence singing. For you are good, and your love endures forever. Lord, we come to your house with thanksgiving. For you are faithful to all generations. A joyful noise for the Lord is great, greatly to be praised. Let the whole earth sing, sing to you. good and your love endures forever lord we come to your house with thanksgiving for you are faithful to all generations lord we come into your presence singing for you are good joyful Everybody, welcome to the Christ Community Church Sunday service online. We're so happy that you're tuning in and that we're connecting um, with each other as one big church. We're so happy um, to worship God together. We want to continue to remind you that you can like and share this broadcast so that your friends can join you in worshiping and your family um, and connect with us. We want to make sure that you are commenting and being highly interactive. Um, share your prayer requests in the comments, but we really want to hear from you. Um, so let's continue with our service as we join together in worship and make sure that you sing along at home. Stronger, the King of Glory, the King of 
done for me Um, worshiping the Lord um, with us together right there in your living room. It's so great to sing with him. I know my girls always love um, when we get to sing and dance at home together, so we hope that you're doing that too. We're going to continue our worship service, but first a few announcements. We want to remind you to um, keep sharing, keep liking, keep connecting with us online. It's so important that we can hear from you. And today's service especially is going to be a little bit interactive. So watch for those cues and hit that like button. We'd love to see um, your engagement in that. We also want to remind you that our kids' notes are still going home in the mail and via email. You can also find the links on our website. Um, but check those out. We want to make sure that the kids are getting all that they need and that you as parents have the tools to help equip you to have those awesome conversations. I know that my girls have been having amazing conversations with me about how they hear from God, um, what it means to follow Him, and how they can love Him each day. And it's been so fun, and we hope that you're having those opportunities with your kids as well. If you need help connecting with these resources, give us a call in the church office. We'd love to make sure that you have those things. Also, we want to continue to remind you to be engaging with your Experiencing God Bible study. We pray that that's going well and that you're hearing great things from the Holy Spirit as you read and study His Word. Make sure that you're connecting with your life group or on our Facebook group. If you need help um, getting connected with any one of those communities, let us know. We'll make sure that you get plugged in. We also want to thank you for your continued generosity in giving during this time. Um, God is so faithful, and we just worship him for that, and we thank you for living that out as you give. You can always give online. You can mail it in. Um, there's so many ways. There's information and instructions on how to do that on our website, so check that out. Again, we're going to continue to worship the Lord um, as we dive into his word, so grab your Bible, and let's go.
Good day, Christ Community Church Online family. My name is Justin Hannigan. I want to thank you for continuing to join with us in worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. Today's broadcast and worship time is going to look very different than what you're used to. Instead of a 30 or 40 minute sermon with a main point and three points after that and some takeaways, uh, we're actually going to have an extended time of worship today. All of this is based on week four of experiencing God. I hope that you've been having that special time of going through your workbook, um, quiet time with God, devotions, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I hope it's been a blessing to you. I know that it has been to me. And so I want to begin talking right now about the names of God, about the names of God in Scripture. We're going to learn a lot of different names of God today that will prepare you for some of the lessons that you're going to look at in week four of experiencing God. Each of us was given a different name when we were born and we're all in the same boat because none of us got to choose what name we were born with. Now I know some of you are like, well Justin I have a nickname or I changed my name when I got older. Uh, friend, that's great, that's fine. I just want to say um, for me when I was born my parents chose to give me the name Justin. And I grew up being called Justin. I didn't really get a nickname. Uh, but then about 13 years ago, I actually got a new name and that name is Daddy. Uh, it's a name that only my five kids call me. Uh, believe it or not, no one else calls me that. And I am so thankful and I love that name because it's not just a name, it actually speaks to my character. It actually speaks to relationship. It actually speaks to the way that they perceive me and see me and who I am in their lives. And so in the Bible, in the Hebrew culture, someone's name was similar to that. Someone's name, a name that was spoken, uh, was, was speaking to not just what they were called, but more so their character more so their character. Do you remember when God spoke to Moses back in Exodus chapter three? He showed up in a bush that was burning and it was not consumed and Moses was very afraid. Notice with me, Exodus chapter three, verse 13. Then Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, they're gonna say to me, what is his name? Now, what shall I say to them? This is a really good and fair question, right? Like, I really like Moses' question here because if someone was to send a delegation and they had a message, it would, it would be imperative that we would know who the, the person that wanted the message to be delivered is, right? Like, who is the author of the message uh, that's being sent to someone else? That's a very fair question. Now, look with me at verse 14 of Exodus chapter 3, and we get God's response. God said to Moses, all capital letters, are you ready? I am who I am. And God said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me, Moses, to you, the children of Israel. God said to Moses, I am who I am. The Hebrew language in Exodus 3 and verse 14 more accurately translates, I be that I be. And that doesn't really sound good in English. And so we end up with this phrase, I am that I am, which is God saying of himself, I am the eternal one and I will be what I will be forever. Now, friends, listen, he is I am. He was I am in the beginning. He was I am when he spoke this to Moses. And right now, today in July 2020, he is still I am. And in as much as he is I am, my question for you is, is he your I am? Is he I am to you? Uh, for me, I, I recognize God is I am. Me, Justin, I am not, Right? God is I am, I am not. Um, you might say, well, Justin, what do you mean by that? I mean, think about it. Think about it, friend. Your whole life, all the things that you've ever thought about yourself, all the things that you've ever heard about yourself, maybe, maybe some of them were lies that you were told. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Have you ever thought or said to yourself, I am not good enough? God says, I am. 
Have you ever thought, or someone told you, uh, you're not smart enough? You ever said that? I am not smart enough, God says, I am. Maybe for you it's this lie, I am not beautiful enough or popular enough. God says, I am. Maybe for you, you're facing some trials, some tribulations. Maybe you're saying right now, I'm not able to accomplish this or that. God says, I am. For every single one of your and my I am not thoughts, feelings, or lies that we have told ourselves or we have believed, God speaks over you right now and he says, I am. Let's praise the great I am together with this song, How Great Thou Art. Will you sing with us? Sing my soul, my Savior, 
Welcome back. I love that song so much because it reminds us to focus on God, our I am, our creator, the one whose majesty is displayed in his creation in the universe. Uh, How great is our God. How great thou art, God. And um, now that we've considered and we've sang about God as our creator, and we've studied how God approached Moses and the name by which he called himself, I am, Let's fast forward now to the New Testament of the Bible and see a a very consistent theme woven by Jesus in John chapter 8. You see, in John chapter 8, Jesus' popularity is really growing. He's becoming super well-known in the region of Galilee and beyond, and there are several groups who would like to try to stop his mission. There are several groups that want to oppose his mission teaching. And one of those groups, the Jews, incites an argument with him about who his father is. You see, Jesus in his public ministry talked a lot about his father. And in verse 38 of John chapter 8, we see these words. Jesus said, I speak what I have seen with my father. And then he looks at the Jews that are trying to stop him and he says, and you do what you have seen with your father. Now, we have a juxtaposition here in verse 38 of John 8. We see the word Father used by Jesus capitalized, talking about the Heavenly Father. But then he references uh, in verse, the end of verse 38 to the Jews, your Father, lowercase f, and we'll figure out what he meant by that in a moment. Then the Jews in verse 39 of John chapter 8, they answer and say to Jesus, Ah, Abraham is our father. Jesus looks right at them and he says, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now, verse 40, you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God, Abraham did not do this. Jesus goes on to reveal to them the honest truth that their father, the one that they're following, is actually the devil himself. The devil was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth. Hearing this, they go on to accuse Jesus of having a demon. And he quickly and accurately refutes that point. So then, a bunch of verses later, they turn the conversation back to Abraham again. Look with me at John 8, 53 now. They say, are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who do you make yourself out to be? Look at verses 54 to 58 now. Jesus answered and said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him. But I know him, Jesus says, and I say, If I was to say, I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Verse 56. Your father Abraham, Jesus says, rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. Then the Jews, verse 57, are completely uh, dumbfounded, and they say to Jesus, You're not even yet 50 years old, and how have you seen Abraham? And Jesus says to them in verse 58, Most assuredly I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. Do you see that there? The same name that God used to reveal himself in Exodus 3 to his servant Moses from that burning bush when he told Moses that his name is I am. Jesus, thousands of years later in the first century, talking with these Jews who want to kill him about who the Father is, about who God is. And Jesus says in verse 58 of John chapter 8, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus makes it very clear to them using those same words that God used to describe himself to Moses in Exodus 3. Jesus says, I am. The same God who existed in the book of Exodus manifests his same nature in Jesus Christ, the Son, and rightly declared himself to be one with the Father. To Moses, he was, I am. To these first century Jews, they knew that story. They knew that passage. Now to Jesus, 
speaking to them, he makes it very clear when he says to them, I am, that he is God. Friend, let me ask you, do you know God as your I am? Do you know him as your heavenly father? When Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said we should address God like this, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, holy is your name. Friend, is God your father today? Can you honestly call him Abba? And just like my kids call me, can you call God Daddy and truly mean it with all your heart? We're going to sing a song together that's going to lead us into our next portion. And I hope that you'll lift up these words with us. Uh, it's a song called Overcome. And it starts off talking like this. Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love, destined to die, poured out for all mankind, God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned, but he suffered as if he did. Friend, he suffered for you, he suffered for me, and yet he overcame the grave. Let's worship our Heavenly Father right now together. And remember, the very reason we can even approach him and do that is because he sent the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on our behalf. Let's sing this song with our worship team.
In the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 11, we read uh, possibly a familiar verse to you where John is writing and he's talking about a group of people who are able to overcome Satan, to overcome the devil. And it says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, and they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives even unto death. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11 is the verse that that last song we sang was based off of. And if you think about that verse with me, it's saying that every believer has the blood of the lamb standing as a defense for them. The blood of Jesus Christ fights on our behalf. Our testimony is woven into that. We can defeat the devil. We can stand against the devil's schemes by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Do you know that if you're in Christ, you have a testimony? That your testimony carries weight to it. Your testimony carries an authority. It carries a power. It's, I'm not talking about your power. I'm talking about the power of God. There is power, friends, in declaring testimony, reminding ourselves, reminding others of what God has done and who he is in our midst. In unit four of experiencing God, you're going to learn tomorrow on day one, many of the dozens of names of God in the scriptures, right? We just read in Revelation 12, 11, that he was called the Lamb of God. We read earlier that he was called I Am. We read that he was called Father. Um, throughout the Old and New Testament, we see so many different names of God, dozens and dozens of different names. And New names of God are revealed oftentimes when he reveals himself in a new way. And even the patriarchs of the faith and many of the writers of scripture, when God shows up for a specific purpose in a specific place and his new name is revealed, they even name the places that he showed up after the names of God. On page 72 of your workbook, you're going to see a list of names that occur in scripture. And there's an activity that actually goes along with that list. You're going to be asked tomorrow, if you're doing the workbook with us, to check off if those names have meant something to you. If you have seen God show up in your life in that particular way, it's going to ask you to put a check mark right there. But I'd like to do a little bit of a different activity with you right now this morning here on Facebook Live. You see, right at the bottom of this video, in the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to notice a little like button. Next to it is a little heart icon, and you can actually click those. If you're engaging with the broadcast right now, maybe you're near, near your keyboard or on your phone, you're able to type, uh, t tap that like button or tap that heart arrow icon. Um, this is an opportunity for you to engage with this activity. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to read to you some of those names of God from Unit 4, Lesson 1. And if God has been that particular thing to you, if he, if he has been that, that particular way in your life, if, if you can honestly testify and say, uh, for instance, the first one talks about God is our advocate. Friend, if God has been an advocate for you in, in any way, at any time during your life, go ahead and click that like icon right now or click that heart. You can click it once. You can click it multiple times. Hopefully we can see a bunch of people clicking and, and just giving testimony right there on Facebook Live. Yes, God has been my advocate. If that's true for you, just like he was an advocate for Job, if he's been an advocate for you, go ahead and click like right now. Click the heart right now. Second one, what about God as comforter in sorrow? The Bible says he's a comforter in sorrow. If, he, if he's been that way in your life, just like he was for Jeremiah, go ahead and click the like, click the heart, and let's keep it going. Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor is a name that we see in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. God is, is revealed as a wonderful Counselor. If he's been a wonderful Counselor in your life, go ahead, click like, click the heart. How about Strong Deliverer? Strong Deliverer, Psalm 140. David says he is his strong Deliverer. Click the like, click the heart if that's true of you. Next name of God, Father, right? We already talked about this. If God has been a father for you, you can testify right now by clicking like, by clicking that heart. How about this one? A sure foundation. Keep on clicking. God Almighty, go ahead. The God who avenges me. Keep on clicking. If, if you say yes, you know what? Our guide. 
If he's been a guide to you, if he's been a guide to your family, go ahead and click it. Our help. Our great high priest. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14 says he is a great high priest. Go ahead and click and testify if he has been a high priest unto you. My hope. If he's been your hope, go ahead and testify. Righteous judge. How about righteous judge? Testify. Our leader. Keep on clicking. Light of life. Lord of the harvest. So many names of God. The most holy. Click on it. Prince of peace. Refuge and strength. My Savior. If Jesus is your Savior, let everybody watch and know right now by clicking on that like Clicking on that heart icon, either one, you can keep on clicking if you want to. Sovereign Lord, my support, bread of life, my confidence, keep on clicking. Defender of widows, faithful and true, a consuming fire, my friend, the God of all comfort, the Bible calls him. The God who saves, the Bible says. Head of the church. Keep on clicking. If this is true, if you would say, you know what? He's been my hiding place. Testify. Holy one among you. Jealous. King of kings. Your life. Lord of lords. Mediator. Our peace. My redeemer my salvation, the good shepherd, my stronghold, good teacher. Friend, this is not an exhaustive list. These are just some of the names of God that we see revealed from Genesis to Revelation. There are dozens more, maybe hundreds more, but I hope that you're able to testify right now, wherever you are watching this, that God has been these particular things, these particular way he has worked in your life Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father God, thank you that you reveal your names to us and you reveal your nature and you reveal your character and you reveal your holiness, God. We just exalt you together. We revere you right now, God. We are zealous for your name, God. I pray for every person watching this right now, every person engaging in worship, that you would just speak to their hearts, Holy Spirit that you would speak to their minds and just remind them of your names and your nature and how faithful you have been to them. Your word says that even when we're not faithful, you are faithful. And so we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you that you are the only one who satisfies our heart's desire. Draw us close to you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's declare these truths. Continue declaring the name of God. Continue lifting him up in worship as we sing together Revelation's song. Praise to the King. 
King of kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. Finally, we recognize that to call on God's names, to call on God by name, is also to call on his presence. To call on his name is also to call on his presence. I believe today has been a little different, but it's been refreshing, right? To seek the presence of the Lord, to seek and call out his names together, to, to, to seek his presence. I pray that right now, wherever you are watching this, that the Holy Spirit, that His Holy Spirit would come into your midst with a new revelation of His holiness directly in your heart, that your heart would recognize the holiness of our God and may His presence be so real and tangible to you as you call on His name. I want to challenge you right now for this final section of teaching and testimony together, this short devotion that I'm sharing with you, maybe right now for this final uh, section here, would you consider taking a different posture of worship? Maybe you've been sitting down for quite some time. Maybe you just need to stand up right where you are. Maybe for you, you're in a space where you would feel, feel it necessary to get on your knees before God. Would you put yourself in a different posture of worship than you've previously been? I know some of the most intimate times of pursuing God that I've ever had, I was lying face down, prostrate on the ground with my face to the ground. Whatever posture God is calling you to take, let's put ourselves in a place right now where we can be receptive to what he wants to do. Let's direct our full worship and our full attention to our God together. I'd like to minister some verses to you right now from the book of Psalms. 
And I'd like to read these verses over you, but each of these verses is a directive of things that you can do to worship God right now. And so as we begin, please find a new posture of worship, if possible. And join me in Psalm 86 in verse 9. It says, All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. Would you just give him glory right now? Wherever you are, would you glorify the name of the Lord? Would you just say, God, I want to give you glory for, and just speak his praise. Worship him right now, church. Whatever it is you want to give him glory for. God, we want to give you glory for our children. I want to give you glory for my grandchildren. Whatever it is, I want to give you glory for your church. Glorify the name of the Lord together. Psalm 86 and verse 9 calls us to do so. Psalm 5 and verse 11 now. Psalm 511 says, But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Friend, wherever you are right now, are you joyful in Jesus? Maybe just pray that. Maybe just pray, God, make me joyful in you right now. The verse, Psalm 5 and verse 11, gives us a directive to shout for joy. Just shout to God. Say, thank you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you together in this place. We worship you as one church in multiple locations. Psalm 44 and verse 8 says, In God we boast all day long and praise your name forever. Selah. Can you boast in God right now? Can you boast in God? Whatever posture you're in right now, just make your boast in the Lord alone. Just boast in his names. Just start, to, just start to speak out boasting on God, bragging on God. We have no problem bragging on other people and even on ourselves and even on our kids and on our grandkids. Can we brag on the Lord together? Say, thank you, Holy Spirit. I brag on what you have done in my life. I make my boast in you right now as an attitude of worship and as an act of, of submission and surrender. I boast in you and the fact that you have loved me and you have saved me. As we continue on, Psalm 96 in verse 2 says like this, Sing to the Lord, bless His name. Proclaim the good news of His salvation from day to day. Can you proclaim right now the good news of His salvation? Just say, God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you, God, that you sent Jesus to die for me. Maybe you just recite a verse right now, wherever you are, whatever verse comes to your mind, just, just recite for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, the Bible says. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Wherever you are right now, just proclaim the good news. Just say the good news of the gospel is for me, it's for my family, it is for those who are afar off. Psalm 80 and verse 18 is next. Psalm 80 and verse 18 says, Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Would you just start to call on the name of the Lord together? Whatever name comes to you, Lion of Judah, Rose of Sharon, whatever name of God comes to you right now, Alpha, Omega, I cry out your name. I call on your name right now. Whatever names of God come into your heart, into your spirit right now, just proclaim those names out loud. Holy Spirit, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, whatever name of God you've ever heard in your life, may it rise up within you right now and be worship unto God. Psalm 63 and verse 4 gives us another directive of worship. It says, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Would you just lift your hands to God wherever you are? The Bible says in Psalm 63 and verse 4 that I will lift up my hands to God. You say, why do I lift up my hands? Because it is a posture of worship. It is a posture of surrender. It is a posture of desiring for him to fill you back up. The Bible says in the Old and New Testament as well, I desire that men everywhere would lift up their holy hands and pray. Men and women of God, wherever you are right now, in accordance with Psalm 63 and verse 4, 
lift up your hands to God. Psalm 33 now in verse 21 gives us another directive of worship. It says, For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. If you're watching this broadcast right now, you've probably seen In God We Trust on the money. You've probably seen In God We Trust on the state flag for Florida on our license plates. That phrase, In God We Trust, is everywhere. I want to ask you right now watching this, do you trust in God? Can you make your your proclamation right now? Just simple, simple phrase, God, I trust you. In accordance with Psalm 33 and verse 21, God, I trust you. I trust you over this COVID-19 situation. I trust you over my finances. I trust you over the health of my family. I trust you over every situation. I trust you even in death, God. I will put my trust in you in accordance with Psalm 33 and verse 21. And then finally, our last directive. There are many more, but we're going to stop with Psalm 7 and verse 17. We get this directive from Psalm 7 and verse 17. David is meditating and he says this, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and I will sing to the name of the Lord Most High. Are you ready to sing together, church? Maybe you've said, I I just, I'm not really into singing. I don't have a great voice. No, friend, listen, God delights to hear you sing right now. I hope that you have turned your affection toward him. I hope you've turned your attention toward him, your devotion toward him. I hope that you have been stirred up in your inner man toward a greater zeal, a greater appreciation, and a greater outpouring of love for our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope he has been to you a friend, a savior. I pray that you would praise him with me even right now, that we would declare this song together in whatever posture you're led. We're going to, we're going to close our time by singing this song, Your Name is Power. You're the only answer to the darkness. You're the only right among the wrong. You're the only hope among the chaos You are the voice that calls me on Louder than every lie My sword in every fight Your truth will chase away the night Your name is power over darkness Freedom from the captives Mercy for the broken and the hope your name is faithful in the battle, glory in the struggle, mighty it won't let us down or fail us. Your name is power. Your name is power. I know it's written, hope is certain. I know that the word will never fail. I know that in every situation You speak the power to prevail Louder than every lie My sword in every fight The truth will trace away the night Your name is power over darkness Freedom from the captives Mercy for the broken and the hopeless Your name is in the battle, glory in the struggle, mighty, you won't let us down or fail us. Your name is power. Your name is power. When you speak, the darkness scatters, light arise and heavens open. Holy Spirit, let us hear it. When you speak, the church awakens. We believe the change is coming. Holy Spirit, let us see it. When you speak, you scatter darkness. Light arise and heaven opens. Holy Spirit, let us hear it. When you speak, the church awakens. We believe the change is coming. Holy Spirit. 
Over darkness, freedom from the captive, mercy for the broken and the hopeless. Your name is faithful in the battle, glory in the struggle. Mighty, you won't let us down, obey us. Your name is power over darkness. Your name is power in the chaos. Your name is power. I'm glad I was able to worship with you today online. It was a good experience just to gather together with the church family. As Pastor Justin was speaking of the names of God, one name resonated with me today, and that was the name Counselor. Isaiah 9, 6 speaks of this wonderful Counselor that is going to be sent to us. John 14, 26 speaks of the Counselor available to us. Other names for this counselor's helper, its advocate, its comforter. And there are those times when I feel especially weak or I feel the burden of the day weighing on me or I feel inadequate and I need a counselor. And so I cry out to my God, God, I need counsel to make it through this day. And he provides that. My challenge to you, get to know the names of God. Let them assist you through the path you're on. Let me leave you with a blessing from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Have a blessed week.